name is Dr. Scott Plymail. I'm the Executive Director of the Community Health Resource Center and wanted to provide you with another update regarding the coronavirus and ways that you can take care of yourself during this extremely stressful period of time. So to date, during the week of 4-23-2020, there are a total of 2.7 million cases of the coronavirus and in the United States, there are 892,000 cases. This compares with roughly one month ago, 723,000 cases globally and 140,000 cases in the United States, which is roughly eight times growth over the past month. A substantial number of these patients unfortunately do pass away, many of them friends and family members, potentially people that you know. The intention behind these video logs is to help create an environment for you and your family and the people that you care about to live as meaningful and as stress-free a life as possible under these circumstances. So as a reminder, the Community Health Resource Center based in San Francisco provides resources to people who may be struggling. We have behavioral health services, which include psychotherapy support, as well as support in matching you with resources if needed. Feel free to give us a call at 415-923-3155 or visit us online at chrcsf.org to speak with someone directly, schedule an appointment for a follow-up, or get some resource information regarding your individual needs. We also have registered dietitians on our team who are able to provide you with nutrition counseling as you look to create a safe and healthy environment at home for yourself and your family or friends. Today what I wanted to do is to remind you all of some of the important elements that we've been discussing in the past video logs and then to build on those as we look into the future and some of the uncertainty that comes with the coronavirus. As a reminder, please practice very basic but very important elements of health and well-being. This includes good nights of sleep, making sure that you're eating well, getting exercise, and social engagement, which is vital to our overall health and well-being, but engaging in socially conscious and socially distancing types of behavior so that you can have the needed social engagement, but not be at risk of transmitting the coronavirus. Second very important element that I wanted to remind you of is capacity building. Capacity building in this case means creating environments where you have the ability to be more aware of what you need and be able to engage those things more on an emotional level. So if you're needing more time to yourself or if you're needing more social engagement or if you're simply really struggling with what you're going on, of being able to tap into that emotional experience so that you can get help through those challenging feelings or circumstances. By capacity building, it means practicing things that make you more sensitive or more aware of what those things are and building your capacity to engage them to get the support that you might need. I would also encourage you to develop routines. Routines can be a very stabilizing element in a time where there is a lot of uncertainty. So sticking to a routine of going to bed at roughly the same time every night and waking up at roughly the same time in the morning. Having routines of exercise at specific times during the day or reading books or engaging in activities that you find rewarding. Sticking to a routine as much as possible. Potentially you're working from home and potentially this adds a routine to your day-to-day -day life which can be very healthy and reaffirming. Again, in times of uncertainty, when it feels as though we have very little control over the progress we're making in countering the impact of this virus. It can feel as though we have very little control over our lives. What I want to remind you of is that you do have a lot of control over your life. You still have a lot of choice with what you do with your time and energy. And I want to encourage you to explore what you are doing with that time and energy so you can engage it in the most meaningful way and potentially a very stabilizing way. If you are a parent of younger children, it is also very important to support them as they look to a regular schedule and also look to you on how you're coping with some of the stress as they will likely be modeling their own emotional reactions to follow how you're coping under these circumstances. 
So building for them a sense of structure, a sense of routine, as well as a sense of safety, security, and support, both for yourself and for them, can be a very important part of this process. Next thing I would like to think about and offer support around is being proactive. It looks as though the progression of the coronavirus will lead to new states of normal. Many people are calling this the new normal. It's unsure exactly what the treatment processes will look like for the coronavirus, though it does look as though some of the precautions may be lifted at some point, allowing people more mobility or potentially even returning to work where they weren't allowed to work over the past several weeks or even months. As we return to a new normal, it's very important that you look to some of the practical things that you might need. One of the unfortunate side effects of this coronavirus is economic challenge. Many families and individuals are facing the loss of income, either losing their jobs and needing to go on unemployment or having reduction in the number of hours that they're working. These are very practical and concrete consequences, which fortunately there are resources to help support. Being aware of what you need so that you can help problem solve through these very practical challenges is very encouraged. That would include talking to people who you trust with regard to some of the challenges that you're facing so that you can get very practical and concrete resources and referrals so that potentially you can apply for financial assistance. When it comes to some of the basic needs for survival, such as food, clothing, housing, these can impact us in ways that are unforeseen. We can become overwhelmed by the emotional experience that comes with potentially losing our homes because of mortgage payments being unmet or rent being able to be unpaid. I would strongly encourage you to get support both emotionally and practically through these experiences so you can come up with ways of getting financial resources, reallocating financial resources, getting emotional support, and problem solving so that you don't feel so alone, isolated, and potentially can resolve some of the challenges that you're facing. It looks as though this is going to be a period of time with a number of unknowns and potentially a period of time with significant economic consequences. I wanted to support you through this process by giving you some advice and encouraging you to outreach to get support where needed. Again, if you're looking for emotional support, and counseling through this period of time, please give Community Health Resource Center a call at 415-923-3155 or visit us online at cgsf.org.